Not very long ago, it was pretty much necessary for a prime minister to profess his or her Christian faith. It's still a requirement for the monarch to do so. Recent political leaders who were guided by their Christian faith include Margaret Thatcher, Tony Blair and David Cameron. But in politics, much has changed. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is today a Hindu, about which, uh, rightly, uh, not much concern has been raised. Whilst the possibility of Kate Forbes becoming First Minister in Scotland has caused a rumpus. She is a member of the Free Church of Scotland, a Calvinist denomination. In honest answers, she says that she would not have voted for gay marriage, but were she to be elected leader, she would not seek to reverse the present law. Another candidate, Humza Yousaf, has declared that he is religious in private, but not in his political life, which seems to me to be rather what Kate Forbes is saying. Nonetheless, her leadership campaign may already have been wrecked. Her plight has led to the intriguing question of whether in today's Britain, Hindus and Muslims are acceptable as political leaders, but Christians are not. Uh, Timothy Stanley is a Catholic, as well as being an historian, journalist and broadcaster, and he joins me now. Tim, how very nice to have you on the programme. Welcome to GB News. Um, do you think that Christians are in some way being persecuted in this matter? Not exactly. I think a certain kind of Christian is being persecuted. So it's not only OK to be religious in modern British politics. It can actually be an advantage. And I've been struck. I sit in the press gallery many days. I've got a sketch writer for Telegraph. I'm struck by how many MPs are Christian, are openly Christian, and talk about how it informs their politics. But it's a certain kind of Christianity that's acceptable. First, it's a highly privatised, as in limited to the private sphere Christianity. So the formula is, I am personally a Christian, but it wouldn't necessarily affect my views on certain social issues. The other kind of Christianity that's acceptable is a left-wing Christianity. So it's all very well to say, yeah, I'm a Christian, it shapes my views, that's why I believe we should be good to the poor, or we should give more aid to people overseas. But if you're the kind of Christian where you say, and this extends, my Christianity extends to also saying that sex outside marriage is probably not part of God's design, then that's not acceptable. So the real problem with Forbes is not that she's religious. The problem is it's the certain kind of religion that she professes, which is now very out of touch. Oh, OK, you, you, have addressed that. you have addressed that in an analytical way, and I, I think there's a lot in your analysis. Now give me your view on that. Are you telling me that that's an acceptable situation, or, or do you rebel against it? Oh, I think it's totally unacceptable. Don't get me wrong, I think it's quite offensive, because one thing it leads to is people lying. Uh, and you should never have that in public life. That's very unhealthy. Either it means that the politician who is uh, a, a, a doctrinaire, orthodox Christian, either they're going to lie to the public and say, look, it doesn't affect the way I vote. And that must be a lie, because if you truly believe in God, it shapes your entire life, and therefore it's going to shape your politics. Or else, which is perhaps equally bad, they are going to change uh, their beliefs in order to reflect what they think the electorate wants to hear. And I, I don't like that either. 